side of me. Don't be afraid to get too close. I only bite if you pay me extra. Oh. Hey, everyone. This is Jay Todd. And here's what's happening this, this week, week in gambling. gambling. This Week in Gambling has been made possible by Casino Action, a member of the Casino Rewards family. Casino Action, where the action never sleeps. Hello friends and welcome back to This Week in Gambling, Round 2. I'm your host, Jay Todd, coming to you from our secret location high in the Andes Mountains. No? <laughs> okay. Uh, switch the backgrounds, please. There. Now I'm in front of Bellagio. Believe the illusion. This week, we have stories on huge poker tournaments and social games, plus an interview with Michael Caselli of Bluff Europe. But first, let's talk once again about Full Tilt Poker. Last week, we told you that the Alderney Gambling Control Commission seems to think they did a pretty good job of regulating full tilt poker. Sure, hundreds of millions of dollars in player funds went missing on their watch, but whatever. You guys rock! Now it turns out that full tilt poker is hiring again. Really? And poker pro Daniel Negrano says that players who had accounts at full tilt poker will most likely never see their money again. And Daniel should know. He's my boy. Call me. We'll keep an eye out and an ear open to see if anything develops on this story and we'll let you know. But right now, I'd like to welcome another special guest to This Week in Gambling. Here from SBR Forums is Pete with our sports betting update. Thanks, Jay. This week, the world of sports betting kicks off uh, what we call the low season, at least for U.S. bettors, now that the NCAA tournament is over, uh, as opposed to the high season, which is when American football starts up again in September. Right now, we have the end of the NBA regular season, which is a unique time that can have great betting opportunities as teams use the end of the regular season for different purposes, which you can then bet into accordingly and often find value because their lines are still mostly going to be based on their overall regular season stats and records. And that's the kind of thing that is true in all sports, of course, but it tends to be especially true in basketball since basketball is such a system-based game and that can change very quickly at the end of the season. The NHL playoffs are also starting this week, and as always, we have tennis and soccer. But the biggest change at this point in the betting season is that the low-impact grind of the baseball regular seasons has begun, and a lot of the pros and savvy rec players love betting into baseball lines, and the books also in general have to be very careful during the baseball season. The juice on baseball lines is usually lower than the juice on any other major sport at most sports books. Almost all books have reduced juice, at least on money lines in baseball, and many have reduced juice on totals as well. Pinnacle, for example, offers margins of just 1.5% on baseball money lines, which is the lowest margin of any major sports market that they offer. Other markets of Pinnacle have margins of about 2 or 2.5%. Two so with baseball, you're usually getting the best odds out of any major sport, and the lines also shift around a lot. So having accounts at different books and using the line comparison service to make sure you're getting the best odds available on any line that you want to uh, bet at can reduce the juice that you pay on baseball to near zero. At SBR, of course, we do have a great free line service, which can be found at sbrlines.com. And using that, you can really get great value all season long betting baseball. So that's what's on tap in the world of sports betting this week, Jay. I'll talk to you next week. For SBRforum.com, I'm Peter Loshak. Thank you very much, sir. We're very pleased to be working with SBR to help provide our sports betting content. We're going to take a break. When we come back, news on a poker tournament, social gaming, and, uh, oh yeah, Michael Caselli of Bluff. Follow us on Twitter for breaking industry news, real-time updates, and new videos. Visit twitter.com slash twigfeed.
happening, and I'll go to point, and I'll go, this week in gambling, so right as I point, okay? You girls can be loud, right? Yes, you girls can be loud, right? Okay. That's right. I, I have a good feeling about how this is going to work out. You know, it seems that everyone these days is positioning themselves for the rush when real money online poker hits the U.S. market full force. Even Zynga. You know, the company that runs that suck-out festival they call online poker through their Facebook application? Yeah. Last week, Zynga was trying to woo the likes. Woo the likes? Woo the likes. Anyway, they're trying to get in bed with the world-class Win Resorts. That would sort of be like me hitting on Jessica Alba. Fat chance of closing that deal. <sighs> anyway, the one-year anniversary of Black Friday is coming up Sunday, April 15th. And what better way to commemorate the event than with a poker tournament? Well, our friends at America's Card Room have a good one coming up with a prize pool of a quarter million dollars. $200 buy-in plus 15 will get you a seat at the table and a shot at the quarter million dollars. So remember, that's Sunday, April 15th. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time U.S. Because, you know, the whole world runs on U.S. time. That would be midnight in the United Kingdom for all my friends across the pond. A and remember to always comply with your local, state, and federal laws regarding online poker. And speaking of laws and online poker, you like the segue? A couple of weeks ago, I was at the iGaming North America conference, and I caught up with Michael Caselli of Bluff Europe and interviewed him about this very subject, legal online regulated poker coming to the state of Nevada this year. Hey everyone, Jay Todd caught up with Michael Caselli of Bluff Europe. We're here at iGaming North America, and I understand that you have some big news to tell our viewers out there. Absolutely huge news. Great news for poker players that live in Nevada. Um, we we're at iGaming North America. It's a big conference. Simultaneously, while some news was breaking, that there's an expectation that intrastate, so that's poker uh, within the state of Nevada, within the borders of the state of Nevada, should be expected to go live in Q3 or Q4 of this year. Simultaneously, I happen to be at the Nevada Gaming Control Board, where they actually said exactly the same thing, that they're expecting live, online, real money poker from licensed operators here in Nevada to be online Q3, Q4 this year. That's for those of you who aren't in the industry, that's quarter three or quarter four. So that's like the second half of this year, Absolutely. they're expecting live, real money, online poker in the state of Nevada. So a lot of my poker friends that were living in Nevada are thinking, where can I go? I've got to go move to Canada so I can go and play online poker. Can't do it from America anymore. Well, good news, stay in Nevada, don't leave, stay at these casinos, and then you can go home at the end of the year and you can go play online and make some more money. Wow, and where, if people want more information on this, where can they go to read about it? Same place you can go every day to find the best information about poker, www.bluffeurope.com. Excellent, thank you so much. Thank you, Jay Todd. All right. Ah, oh, wow. Well, thank you, ladies, for standing here with me for the entire show. Thank you all for watching the entire show. We'll see you all next week on This Week in Gambling. You're, you're not going to believe me, but I have an outfit exactly like that at home. Really? I do. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I just I, I put it on, and I stand in front of the mirror, and I look at myself, and I, I, I sing, I feel pretty, oh, so pretty. I got something you can tweet.